You wanted to see more comparison reviews? Brand internally, different segments, and we have it here today. For you, the one you wanted to see, Audi A5 versus Audi A7 here with Thomas on Autogefühl for you. We start here directly in the front where you can see the biggest difference is the bigger A7 has a more upright front grille here also in the S-Line Sportia package and in the Glacier White. So here this part is just more upright, looks stronger. We also have a laser light here by the way but both are available with matrix LED. Here you can see the A5 a little bit smaller and the front goes a little bit further down so it looks a little bit smaller. It looks also really prominent, really aggressive on the road. Just in comparison to the A7, it looks a little bit more subtle. Which one is your favorite from the front? 4 meters 73 or 186 inches is the length of the A5 Sportback. There's a coupe, there's a convertible and the Sportback is the five door version here with the rear doors as well. And that beautiful fastback line. And the cool thing both with A5 and A7 is that fastback rear hatch where it opens all the way and you can use these both kind of like an estate at the same time you get the great design here with 18 inch wheels here by the way and now it gets really exciting because the length difference between a5 and a7 is 23 centimeters or 9 inches let's take a look here you can indeed see it it's basically also like the top of my fingers to my watch this is then the length difference between the A5 and the A7. It's not that visible when they stand next to each other. Here then at 4 meters 96 overall in length or 195 inches. It is a thing when you're parking in and out that it will be more practical when you have the A5. It's just a little bit short. However, as for the agility and how you can maneuver it, this one, the A7, you can get with rear axle steering and that fakes a shorter wheelbase and kind of makes up for that missing, uh, you know, missing agility maybe or something. We will experience that in the driving part. And to me, both A5 and A7, Sportback and also the A5 Coupe, these are my favorite Audis as for design. They just look awesome. Here also again, exterior S-Line, 20 inch wheels here and that stretched roof line. I would like to hear your opinion. Our Thomas B cameraman thinks A5 is even more beautiful. I personally think that the A7, because it's just a little bit longer here, looks more massive and looks more beautiful. I would like to hear your opinion. In the rear, the main difference is that the tail lamps here are split. I have a modern, beautiful design. Overall, very clean. Oh, Fake exhaust police, AFAP, audio fuel fake exhaust police because the real ones are on the inside. District green is this color, by the way. <laughs> and on the A7, we have this light strip that goes all the way through. That is to me, um, you know, just more strengthening the width, also a little bit more massive that rear. And a cleaner layout here, sporty honeycomb style in lower parts. So, yeah, to me, indeed, I love the A5 design and the A7 is probably the only comparison where I say this one loses to me in design. Well, loses. I found the A7 more beautiful, even more beautiful, but just in this comparison, otherwise the A5 Sportback is also a very beautiful car. Welcome to the interior of the A5 and it's very clean and sporty indeed. Here we have the S-Line interior beautiful fabric seat here it's fabric on the inside really sturdy at the same time comfortable and also breathable the thing is that in the us and in the uk you can get the a5 as far as i checked the configurator animal leather only that's of course hit and miss in germany you have a lot of options not only this but also for example with microfiber on the inside headroom wise with 189 or six for two Still plenty of headroom left. There's also a panoramic roof available. Here on the, wow, this brushed aluminum style, really clean and my favorite AC unit in the automotive industry. The user interface in the A5 is a little bit more simple still. Ah, great clicking sounds, awesome seat heating and so on. And also the drive select is, you know, with the haptic function, that's really great. 10 inch screen here since the facelift of the A5 family. Before you had a small screen without touch, here now you have touch and then you had this MMI control knob. This one is gone now, so everything with touch as for the infotainment system. But the menu itself is actually quite simple. Steering wheel, 
is not too small, but also not too large. And with real buttons at the steering wheel to control also here for the volume. And then you also have the digital instruments. So overall, I'm really happy with the user interface and the clean design. Yeah, just the screen looks a little bit attached. And here with the armrest, also great build quality, well attached. And then here you connect your smartphone um, with one USB-C charger or then here inductive charging pit. And the digital instruments, they are not too different actually. You can change the views something and you can also have the map in between here. So clear to read, great digital instruments. Here the main infotainment system in the A5. Once again, I think that the whole system is kept relatively simple. You also have the car and terminal GPS, which also works. Oh, that is simple. Yeah, actually quite fine. That's fine. So in here, Apple CarPlay integration looks like this. So overall, I'm really happy with the infotainment system because it's kept simple actually. And here also how you control the car settings. Here's the drive select with the suspension. We have the adaptive suspension here in here without air suspension. That's also one of the difference in the A7. You can get air suspension. And here in the rear legroom, yeah, it does exactly fit with this recess here. Um, yes, I could sit a little bit more forward when I would also push the, the steering wheel more in, but when someone very tall is sitting in the front, it doesn't leave much legroom here in the rear. Of course, here the Sportback is better than the coupe version of the F5. Um, headroom wise, does work. That is no problem. And you know, the seating comfort in the rear is actually quite decent. Once again, if you're five tall adults, it is a problem. I see a huge middle tunnel. So, mm, yeah, I mean, it's somewhat okay, but not vast <laughs> offering of space. This will be different in the A7. Here we go now with the A7. A little bit more headroom and definitely more legroom. So this is a substantial difference. So if you want to drive with tall L's in the front plus tall L's in the rear, then of course the A7 is the better choice. Longer wheelbase means more legroom and the overall seating comfort here is also indeed better in the rear. Um, almost a little bit executive alike. Um, of course, you have also an armrest in the A5 here. The middle area is a little bit taller or a little bit wider. You can see it exactly right here. And you also have a more sophisticated climate unit here in the rear. But big middle console here, two USB-C chargers. So here, yeah, I mean, you have this split, but you can indeed use this one also with five tall ends in the rear. The middle part is not as comfortable. Also, headroom wise is close so this only for short periods of time but for tall adults is absolutely great now the audi a7 interior here in the front also very clean layout also a 10 inch screen on the top but here it is integrated and doesn't pop out and the past problem that this one here could be like squeezed and pressed obviously they have also fixed that build quality wise so that is better still a lot of high gloss piano like i used hmm that's not so that cool and also you have the additional screen in the lower part. I do prefer a manual climate unit. However, for a touchscreen temperature solution, it is somewhat cool. Um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> uh, so I'm fine with it, although I would prefer the manual dial. So the user interface in the A5 to me a little bit more classic and simple. But here also a beautiful layout. The interior build quality and everything is just superb. There's like two USB-C chargers here. So yeah, really happy with that one. Also still you have volume jog and real buttons at the steering wheel to control the digital instruments. And the seating comfort, well, first of all, once again, 1 meter 89, 602, also a lot of headroom. There's also a panoramic roof available as an option here. You do have a little bit more comfort, especially when you are very tall. If you're less tall than me, then maybe it doesn't make the biggest difference, but you feel a little bit more sophistication. Digital instruments, actually not a big difference then between the two vehicles. And also here, once again, a very good overview. Oh, that is with high-speed automatic driving. It goes better, yeah, more rather like this. Also kept very simple this menu and also fast enough. Apple CarPlay integration here looks like this actually. So very well usable. You can also individualize your hotkeys on the left side. Here we do have the air suspension. That means that in the drive select, when you, for example, go to dynamic mode, the suspension is going down and it's raising again when you're in a comfort or in the auto mode. And what's really interesting is when both screens here play together, for example, you type a 
address search here and then you see the lower part switches to this keyboard keyboard key, keyboard come on <laughs> switches to this keyboard or you can also write them in here but you can also of course always use the voice input to get the gps running oh well i don't understand so many extras in this vehicle but it doesn't even have a rear view camera of course it offers one but it's not included at least here in this eu spec so in germany you have to check that you do get a rear view camera gladly for all our friends from the united states a rear view camera is mandatory anyway by law it should be the same in germany or at least i mean an a7 at that price should always include a rear view camera no matter which market i got the key <laughs> and here i can open the trunk here by pressing twice a very impressive setup here isn't it and you can see let's see if you're in the highest position yeah i can pretty much stand underneath both of them and the trunk difference is here we have 465 liters with the a5 and you can see a meter of 40 inches hardly fits in here so the width the a7 is that much wider in the trunk and the length here is one meters and six or 42 inches and here the A7 is that much longer. That's the basic difference and you can very well access everything. That's the cool thing with the sport bags. And of course, you can also fold the seats. You can reach over here uh, and then fold it. There's no um, mechanism there. Reach over right there. But overall, so well usable like an estate. If we now get to the A7, where we have 70 liters more at 535 liters. And as I said, this is what you have more in length and about this is what you have more in width. So a little bit more flexible, a little bit more storage, also easy from that access. Um, and you can see, because the car is a little bit longer, also with the overhangs, I have to reach over here a little bit further. You can of course also do that from the rear. Overall, both are very, very well usable. Here, just a little bit more trunk. And now, yeah, I have the gas struts as help. <laughs> Engine-wise, well, it really depends on which model you pick. You have 2-liter 4-cylinders and 3-liter 6-cylinders on the petrol side and also on the diesel side. And it really also depends on the country. For example, the S7 and the S5 Sportback in Europe is diesel since a few years now. Why would they do that? So we had to go for, like, let's say, a right-size engine here, 3-liter V6, 340 horsepower for the A7. You can still get it in the A7, but not in the S7 in Europe, but in the US, you can still get the S7 also with the petrol engine. And the same also goes for the S5 Sportback. Here, this is then the 2-liter 4-cylinder engine, around 200 horsepower. You can also get around 250 horsepower spec. And also in the US, you can still get S5 petrol engine. Only the S5 convertible you can still get as petrol in Europe. So strange decision by Audi, but in a way, this was for us the best comparison because the A7 will most people buy then with this engine with a 3D V6 and the A5 most people will buy with the 2 liter 4 cylinder petrol engine. So these are let's say the most common specs. If you would have compared the S5 would have been possible in Europe because then it would have been diesel. So that's the reason for the engine choice today. Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, starting with the big one, with the A7 and German Autobahn test. We put it here to the dynamic mode, we have the air suspension, it lowers down, sporty note, also goes in the S shifting mode for sporty shifting, putting up the gears then higher RPM and starting from 40 kilometers an hour on the motorway, let's go. Club 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, really stable, nice acceleration from the 3 liter 6 cylinder engine. You can also lane change in here when the air suspension is set on the stiffer node, really nice. Also, good noise insulation here at higher speeds. Awesome traveling vehicle. It's one of the best vehicles for the motorway overall. And I really don't need an A8 or an S class for that. This one already delivers you all the kinds of comfort. At the same time, the seats comfortable but sporty great seat ergonomics indeed and 
wow, it feels so sophisticated here. And that is also one of the major differences than A7 versus A5. Both, we already heard that, are awesome vehicles, no doubt. But here, the bigger one, just a little more mass, more wheelbase, it just brings this kind of sophistication to the ride. A little bit more calmness, a little bit more sophistication. You feel a little more, let's say, settled in a way. And especially then when we go back here to the normal shifting mode. Yeah, user interface, better in the A5, a little bit more classic. Still here for the touchscreen solutions. Um, also lower part with the climate unit and so on. One of the best climate solutions that is not still classic, you know. So you can control it still very well, although it is here, this, um, this touchscreen for, for that kind of stuff. Here also you see some of the ambient lighting here in the lower part, especially that is beautifully done here. Really like that. And also here in the tunnel, you hear how silent the vehicle is really really awesome it brings me you know that the feeling of i can drive hours and hours and hours without any back pain without caring about that i just love this vehicle it's one driving wise it's definitely one of my favorite vehicles overall and as i said earlier also this combination of you have the great design yet the great flexibility practicability with that head, yeah, this fastback trunk, that's called that way. Cruise control is set here on the lower part. Also here with the active lane keeping assist, very well done. All the assistance systems work flawlessly. And even if you're on the auto mode and the air suspension is not being lowered down, it gives a very good compromise of sportiness and comfort. It doesn't lean too much to the corners here, getting off the motorway. Nice feeling from the brakes here, the right and the left S turn. It is a large vehicle, but at the same time, it feels so agile and nice to ride. Yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite rides overall together. Also, you know, with the BMW 5 Series, because they both have this, I would really say, perfect combination of sportiness and comfort, you know. You have no compromise on spoilness and no compromise on comfort. Maybe the only compromise on spoilness is the weight, because the A5, we will soon see it, it will feel a little bit sportier because it's just lighter, you know, and then the smaller wheelbase helps in the winding corners. This is more about motorway, we'll soon have another acceleration, and then we'll get to some winding corners where we can also gather some experience here with the A7 and then compare it to the A5. Look at that, steering also with a very direct input and 90 degrees steering often means also 90 degrees turn. I love that. The progressive setup they have here from Audi is just flawless. From the steering input, the steering feeling, at this moment here A5, A7, also one of my favorite vehicles. Um, they have, you know, it's not that you have to have too much power. At the same time, it has this progressive style. You don't have to turn it all the way in. You can always keep both hands at the steering wheel. That's for totally fine. With these driving modes, it also changes a little bit what feedback you get, by the way. Overview, so actually also quite decent. Can't complain about that, although it's so design focused. Just the B pillar here is very thick. Therefore, you do need the blind spot monitor. And that is so well integrated into that mirror. And this blind spot solution here is also the best we know, actually. So that's really, really cool. As for the fuel economy, when you're not speeding it up like I do, but rather calm driving, cruise control and so on, the minimum you can actually get is um, some nine liters, small kilometers, 26 MBG US, 31 MBG UK. A more realistic figure, also with some city traffic, a little bit more speed, it's been rather like 10 liters on mile kilometers, 23 MBG US or 28 MBG UK. Interesting that this will not differ that much if you have this segment here or the one below that. It's more about how you drive it. So with an A5 with the three liter petrol engine, you consume more or less the same amount of fuel. It's just really a question of calm driving and cruise control, more seat traffic, stop and go, flooring it out. That is the main difference then and not if it's now like a little bit heavier or not. 
I really love this engine. It's to me the best engine that is in the Audi lineup. We can also get it in the S5, not in the A5, in the S5, still in the US for the Sportback and the Coupe. And in Germany, for example, Europe, only the S5 petrol in the convertible that's left and now S7 and also S5 in Germany both diesel come on seriously so I have to go for this one here you can also just go to the S shifting mode here for an acceleration then go from 90 kilometers an hour nice and lower sound not too much not accelerated 150 already and now here in this I always call it like a Nürburgring North Slifer like corner really awesome how nice it gets into this long corner how settled the car is on the ground and once again how silent it is although I'm at really really high speeds once again 180 kilometers an hour so yeah around 150 120 miles an hour this is just a flawless job and this is one of the autobahn cars definitely I just love that and it feels so flawless to drive that one at the same time, you can also go back into normal D mode, so you don't always have to switch the driving modes. Sometimes just when you want to do overtake a maneuver, you pull back the shifting lever and you just concentrate on that faster shifting and leave everything else as it is. What I tend to do when I drive a car for a very long time or when I own such a vehicle, then I'll put in the drive select the individual mode and for example, um, put the suspension for example on comfortable but the steering on dynamic so that way I have most comfort from suspension but the steering gives me a little bit more feedback and feels more dynamic I really like this setup you know and maybe the drive system on balanced also this is a nice individual setup um, that kind of combines a little bit sporty feeling from the input here from the steering at the same time comfortable suspension and maybe then the engine not too exaggerated but also not too slow you know like when you're only in the efficiency mode car feels maybe a little bit less sporty and disconnected and just in dynamic mode you know might be a little bit too much then at times so this individual mode is to me then a nice compromise you can set then for yourself it's good that you can also individualize that actually well but now what about winding corners because that will be very crucial in describing the difference once again between A7 and A5. All right, once again, we go to the dynamic mode, stiffer suspension and now also uneven road, but that air suspension, even in dynamic mode, does a good job. So this is something the A8 has as advantage. You can get the air suspension in comparison to the S or A5. Um, so that gives you more comfort in general. And here now the winding corners. We have the, still the classic Quattro here with the three liter engine. That means rear wheel bias. To me, it would also be very important that I don't have so like understeering and so on. And I really have to say once again, although it's a heavy vehicle, it feels really sporty and nice in the corners. Oh, acceleration out is super cool. And once again, that great steering characteristic. This feels so smooth and flawless. So this is one of the vehicles and I already did that like 2013 with the RS7 hitting a lot of different alpine passes in the mountains and although it's a big and heavy vehicle and you can put a lot of passengers and luggage in it it is one that you can have so much fun with even in the, those alpine passes yeah and these serpentine roads really awesome yeah once again it's one of my favorite vehicles also driving wise just so sad that in the US especially you can only get it with animal skin leather seats. I hope they change it at some point. But in the UK, as I said, you can also get the seats as I'm sitting on for the A7, not for the A5, strangely. Well, but now even more interesting is, will the A5 be enough? Although it's, depending on the configuration, 25 to 40,000 euros or dollars less expensive, will it deliver the same comfort? How much sportier is it? And which one would I take home? This is going to be really, really tough. All right, now to the Audi A5 Sportback. This is really super interesting. We'll also put it here to the dynamic mode. 
and also in the S shifting mode for more boosting up the RPM. We also go back to 40 kilometers now here with the two liter engine. You can also get the three liter engine, but here just to give you a feeling for this one here, this engine will be mostly picked by the most A5 customers. Let's go. Now, of course, it takes a little bit more time. And here, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Also, a good acceleration. And as I said, you can also get the 3 liter V6 for this one here in the S5. But petrol only in the US now anymore, not in Europe. That's the thing. That's why also the reason why we had to pick the 2 liter engine. And for this one here, the S5 would have been a diesel than in Europe and so this one you know made more sense here good acceleration not only but also here great stability at the motorway good noise sensation as well but a little bit louder than in the A7 the A7 a little bit more sophisticated as for the noise insulation as for the whole driving feeling and very interesting with the A7 we had the rear axle steering and that gives us the combination of agility at low speeds and stability at higher speeds so the difference between the bigger and the smaller car is actually less or you know not that, not that large because of the rear axle steering we have mounted in the a7 that is a crucial factor and also helps with easing around however one of the biggest advantage of the a5 still is of course that it's just shorter when you are in a narrow basement garage or when you live in a city which has narrow situations, narrow streets, there you just have the advantage of a shorter vehicle with the A5. That's of course a crucial thing. If you don't have that, that a problem, you know, like the US West Coast, you have a lot of open space anyway, then you can easily go for the A7 as for this aspect. The A5 here also already delivers good comfort, is also a good motor of a vehicle. I really feel at home here also on the German Autobahn. The seats of the A7 gives us a little bit more comfort, but the difference is not that large. It's just again the A7 that it gives you some more sophistication and calmness in the ride. But the A5 Sport, but Sportback is for this segment already very elaborated. And the funny thing is, when you really ask me, C-Class versus E-Class, E-Class it is for me. BMW 3 Series versus 5 Series. 5 Series it is, no doubt. Because they just give me so much more comfort that it would make sense for me rather go low spec 5 Series than high spec 3 Series. Here with the A5 and the A7, I really have to think twice because some things speak for the A5, price of course, and the size as for, you know, narrow cities and so on. But then again, many things speak for the A7, you know, that you can get the rear axle steering, that you can air, get air suspension, and you have more, let's say, combination of sportiness and comfort. You get both, indeed. Yeah, but acceleration here was also good. Will be even better, of course, than in the S5, especially when you get the petrol variants. Yeah, too bad we can only get it in the convertible S5 than here in Europe anymore. That's the thing. And the same also for the for the S7 way, which is also coming as diesel here in Germany now, was like, like uh, really? And then you have to go back for the A7 to pick the 3 liter V6? Really, Audi? I don't get it. User interface while driving, a little better here because we still have the nice Audi climate unity and also this hard button style here in the lower part where you can select the driving modes. You don't even have to use the touchscreen then for that. You can click it right through. Also nice clicking sound, so user interface a little bit more classic, simpler here in the A5. As for the steering input, I feel, feel, felt that the A7 had a little bit more direct steering input, but both are really direct and progressive, really nicely done. Both ha have great driving experience, really. So it is really, really tough to decide between these, definitely. Um, yeah, the price difference, of course, is you know, bigger, especially when you compare now the 3 liter V6 and also more equipment you can actually put in the A7, then the price difference is rising from not only 25K euros or dollars to, to about like 40,000 euros or dollars. And then you start thinking, of course, 
that this one here, I mean, we already know that, that this one here, the A5 Sportback, makes more sense in a price performance way. You know, that is quite clear. But overall, and also especially if price makes no difference, hmm, this will be really tough to decide. Soon we will have the winding corner section again, where we then can feel, is the A5 really that much more agile in these narrow corners? We'll soon experience that. First of all, one more time here with the cruise control and assistance systems here, you do speed and then also cruise control set with a separate column. It's such a great thing to always be able to easily activate and deactivate the lane keeping assist. Here, for example, maybe there's a boring tunnel part. I want to relax a little bit more and let the car do its thing, you know. Then the car is being kept in the lane easier. But then when now that the fast motorway part is arriving in these agile corners later on, I want to control the car myself and just one click and the lane keeping assist is deactivated, whereas with other cars, you sometimes have to go deep in the menu and it's oh, so complicated. Easily done here. And once again, I can also just put back the shifting lever. Then I'm in the S shifting mode and I already can tune up the RPMs for another good acceleration from 90 kilometers an hour. Yeah, and this engine has enough power, no doubt. It's just that the six cylinder yeah, feels more sonorous from the sound and a little bit more sophisticated and consumption difference is not that large actually. Here now, winding corner, just slight bend, newer green notch type of bend I always call it because it's high speed. Wow, it also feels so great on the motorway, really feels at home here, very calm and collected, the lane changes are no problem even at high speeds. This is also awesome. Definitely, what a flawless driving experience here as well with the Audi A5. So as for this fuel economy aspect, some eight liters or more kilometers are easily possible. You have some thumb thing, 30 mpg, but the difference is really not that large between the two liter and the three liter engine. That's always what I've been saying quite, quite a lot of times, is these two smaller engines are not more efficient than the bigger engines. So you won't consume much more fuel with a 3.0-liter V6 than you do with a 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine. That is also a very interesting finding. So yeah, especially our friends in the US get the S5 with the 3.0-liter six-cylinder petrol um, than if you're buying an A5. Of course, yeah, if you have the money spare. Otherwise, a base A5 will also really make you happy, especially here in the five-door sportback version. It's so versatile, but you already, and that's also one of the key aspects, if you don't want to spend the extra money for an A7, which is big and also high in the price, you already, with the A5 here, get the whole Audi experience with the comfort sportiness combination, with the nice user interface here, with the sophistication in the build quality, with the driving fun. You already get it with the base Audi A5 Sportback, so you still get a great deal when you go for, they're not cheap at all, never, but you no, know, a base A5 Sportback will already give you everything you need, basically. And that's clear then price performance wise that this one here is the choice. But overall, hmm, it's really interesting now in these tighter winding corners, will the A5 there really be so much sportier than the A7? Or has that rear axle steering so much effect and the weight, hmm, how will that turn out? Now the A5 in winding corners, dynamic mode. We have the normal adaptive suspension here without air, but that also adapts then gets a little bit stiffer here now. And without air suspension, it's definitely rougher. Although we have 18 inch wheels, so smaller wheels mounted, 20 inch it was with the A7, but definitely rougher here to that surface. And the two rear engine does give us so much power out of the corners. And also when you have a quattro here with the two liter engine, it's always front revised. And that is the difference. So it will be better than with the S5. Of course, here I also feel a little bit more understeer. Yes, the car is a little bit lighter, but that rear axle steering from the A7 definitely gave me, you know, also this really agile effect in the corners so that 
wouldn't really say it's much less fun in the A7 to do these winding corners. Yes, in the S5 petrol it will be different because you have rear wheel bias from that Quattro then and also a little bit more power. But here in this comparison now, mm, yeah, it's not that the A5 would bring so much more fun due to the less weight. Maybe a little, but then, as I said, only in the S5 with rear wheel bias. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely to be noted. Hmm. But where does that leave us now? Well, 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 what do we do now? Oh, that was some close parking, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, what about the pricing? The base price difference is about 25,000 euros or dollars. So, for example, this one here in this spec starts around 45,000 euros in Germany. This one here at 70,000 euros. But if you add the extras, you get a difference here from these test vehicles of 40,000 euros. Yeah, and then you are at around 60k and here around 100k. Of course, this one here with the 3 liter V6 engine. So, definitely price performance winner clearly the Audi A5 Sportback. It delivers you all Audi you need basically. Great sportiness and comfort. Even more fun of course as the S5 Petrol which you can still get in the US also for the Sportback version. Here the A7. Design wise it is my favorite and also the interior is a little bit more sophisticated as for the comfort and the space you have. The user interface however is better with the A5 I feel. Trunk space, both very well usable. Driving fun is great with both as well. Here, once again, rear axle steering and air suspension. The A7 gives you a little bit more sophistication and they indeed come very close. Said that earlier, C-Class versus E-Class or BMW 3 Series versus 5 Series. I feel there's a bigger gap than here with the A5 Sportback and the A7 Sportback because the A5 Sportback is already that good. If price would not play a role at all, I would still go for the A7 to get this extra of sophistication if I wouldn't have any space problems for parking in and out and so on, but the rear axle steering does have this. So I appreciate this little bit more sense of sophistication, sophistication from the A7. Yeah, and in the UK you can also get the nice microfiber seats here by the way for the A7, but in general the offering of animal skin alternatives. In Germany it's great, both for both cars. In the UK and in the US it's really not that good. They need to upgrade the choices right there. So A7 for me it is. My, you know, let's say one of my dream, uh, you know, like a fleet or something at home would be an A7 then for a long road and then the A5 convertible for shorter roads and even more fun. That would be a great setup. Nevertheless, if you think about somehow take price into account, it must be then the A5 Sportback. So indeed, here the matter of price. What's your opinion? Tell me in the comments which one would you actually go for and if you're interested in these vehicles we have a nice comparison between the S5 convertible and the BMW 4 series convertible as also the performance version or if you want to go this one here a little bit more performance style the RS7 we got for you.